what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another amazing episode here on the Veteran Influencers Network. Once again, it's your host, Chris Levine. And today, like with every show that we have, we have a special guest. And, you know, every one of our guests is picked for specific reasons, you know, uh, as far as like how I felt that they actually impacted my life or what they're doing uh, throughout the military or in the veteran community. And uh, today we have uh, First Lieutenant Alicia Page. And I actually met her through the NROTC program at Arizona State University when I was the uh, assistant Marine officer instructor. So ladies and gentlemen, our famous guest, Alicia Page. <laughs> I had to jazz it up. So, you know, usually like a lot of the guests are like extra overwhelmed because they hear like some of the buttons and stuff like, I don't know what to say. I'm all about the sounds. I don't know what to say. I'm just going to wave. <laughs> Oh man, absolutely. Well, hey, let's get into it then. Um, like I said, we, you know, we met in Arizona right now. I'm actually in California. So this is a few years back. Um, and, but what I want to do is I want to go a little bit further back and kind of give everybody like a picture of your life, um, leading up to where we're at today and then kind of honing in on, uh, our experience, knowing, uh, knowing each other from the time we knew each other, uh, to the time that, uh, you departed. And, uh, so I want to start from the beginning cause you said you were born in New Mexico. So, I want to know about baby Alicia. You know, I want to know what your life was like, baby Alicia, growing up. Um, yeah, so New Mexico, there's not really a whole lot there. Most people that are crossing through are just driving. Um, but I grew up in Moriarty, New Mexico, which is a small rural ranching community. Uh, so born and raised there. I didn't really get outside that scope too much until college, really. Um, but, uh, both my parents are still married. So I grew up in a household with my parents and my two sisters, I've got an older sister, um, three years older, and then a younger sister, six years younger. Um, most of what we did, honestly, growing up, because there wasn't much there, uh, was playing outside. Uh, and then as a family, we'd go to the track a lot. My dad would make us run. So that was something that I hated back then. And then eventually I learned to love, but. Um, yeah, mostly just playing outside. I mean, we didn't do a whole lot as kids besides, you know, I personally picked up like 10 different instruments that I wanted to play. And then I would like, I'd play them for a little bit and then I'd kind of quit. I don't play anything now, but uh, that filled up a <laughs> lot of my time. <laughs> yeah, um, reading, you know, just the usual, what you would do like in the middle of nowhere as far as what you'd expect to do. So like, I don't know if you've like looked it up at all, but do you know, are there any, uh, are there any celebrities or any famous people that uh, grew up where you were at? You know what? I think there's one baseball player. Do this you know? is really bad. Cause he's like our celebrity in the town. Um, I can't remember his name, but there's a major league baseball player, I believe from my actual hometown. What, uh, what is he active right now? I think he's still active. Yeah, I think you know what team playing. at least. Hmm. You know what team at least? Nope. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hopefully, no one from my hometown watches it. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, so uh, you said that you also did track. Um, is there any like particular event you enjoy doing? Um, so I actually enjoyed running cross country more than track. Um, I liked the longer distances. For track, I did uh, mostly the 800 meters. I did the mile and two mile occasionally. Um, but I, I honestly wasn't a fan of the longer distances on the track. So I picked up pole vault during that time to kind of mix it up and try something new, which I did really enjoy pole vault. And senior year, it paid off because I did get third at state. <laughs> Never made it to state as a runner, but <laughs> pole vault I did. Hey, some people don't make it to state at anything. Some people just don't win. You know, uh, you got there. That's still incredible. Yeah, so I honestly did enjoy cross country a lot more. And I did that freshman through senior year. I hated cross country with a passion because I would hear them too, because they would always start out with us and they'd be like, all right, uh, cross country break off. We're going to do our warm up of uh, four miles. I'm like, a four mile warm up? No, I don't want any piece of that. Absolutely not. Yeah, for me, that was like my, honestly, my time to like get my own time because my parents were really strict. Like I said, right. we grew up in a small town. So there wasn't much else I could really do. It was like school and then I would do the sport afterwards. 
So I just liked being able to like be on my own and have that alone time. <laughs> Love my yeah. family to death, but we were very close. So I was like, okay, this is my time to be on my own and do my own thing. No, absolutely. And I think, um, I think a lot of people kind of take like sports as like that time for you to kind of either get away or, you know, a lot of people, the hobbies that they have are like, it's like their getaway time, um, you know, just to relieve stress. Like people go to the weight room, you know, they're like, man, I'm stressed out. All right, cool. I'm gonna go to the weight room, knock some iron around for a little bit and, you know, feel better afterwards. So. Right. Yeah. So you also said that you're in the choir. Like, did you ever, you ever like make like singing videos or something like that? You ever try to try out for like Cardi B and like uh, Missy, <laughs> try to make it big to start singing? No, uh, I wouldn't say I was on that level at all. Uh, in elementary school, I did like show choir. And then I just kind of continued that in middle school and freshman year of high school. I think after like sophomore year of high school, I kind of fell out of choir. Um, like you just didn't like it anymore or? Yeah, I just kind of switched my focuses. Cause you know, once I hit sophomore year, I started to orient towards like what I was going to do in the future. Um, so yeah. I just took up other extracurriculars that I prioritized more. Dang, that's crazy. I, I would always, so I know you said that New Mexico, like where you were at, you said, Mo, was it Matriar? Moriarty. Mo, Mo, Moriarty. So it was, I'm assuming like, was it like in the middle of nowhere? Yeah, I mean, we, you have to drive at least 30 minutes to get to Albuquerque, which is the largest, the closest largest city. And then Santa Fe capital is an hour north. Um, but we were in the East Mountains. So, I mean, if we really wanted to go to a city to do anything, and I say city, I, right. Albuquerque is a city, but you know, it's a New Mexico city, so it's not real. Right. Um, but yeah, so uh, we didn't, we only really did trips to Albuquerque if it was like our big family grocery shopping trip, pretty much. Right. That was like the best day ever for us. 30 minutes away, and that's considered a trip? I don't know. That's like down the road. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It was a trip for us. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I get it because, you know, I see some of these places, like, especially like whenever I'm like flying in an airplane, I look down and like, you know, obviously you, when during the daytime, you could see empty, 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 empty. Oh, there's some random houses right there. Empty, empty, empty. I'm just like, I don't know if I could live in like, like a, like a place that's so separated from everything to where you got to drive 45 minutes to go get milk or, you know, or just to, to see other people, you got to like drive so far. I don't know if I could ever do that. Yeah. I mean, it's, you just kind of get used to it, especially when you're there your whole life. Ironically, I'm in a place where that's basically the same deal right now, where you have to drive like 30 to 40 minutes to really get anywhere. Um, but you just kind of get used to it. So it doesn't really bother you as much. Right. So did your, are your parents from there as well? Is that where they met? Yeah, so my both my parents were born in New Mexico. Uh, my dad was a cop at the time. He's retired now, a police officer. And then my mom at the time was working at a hotel. He took a call there, and that's kind of how how they met. <laughs> so she was at the front it's desk. So hot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, that, those are all the details I got. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what they wanted you to know, you know. It's, yeah. <laughs> No, that, that's awesome, man. I love how, uh, you know, things work out like that, you know, because it's so funny when people talk about, oh, you're, you're never going to meet a person here, like this spot. Or you'll never meet a person here. You got to go here. You got to go there. Meanwhile, it's like I'm at work and then I, you know, I met someone that I've been with 20 plus years. What are you going to tell them? You know, that's that's a, that's a great thing to see. There are a lot of parents that aren't really together anymore because I know like mine split when I was pretty young and I've seen the kind of impact that it can have on people's lives when, um, you know, they don't have both parents in their life, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was definitely good. Like I said, we had, um, we had a really good support system growing up, which I think greatly contributes obviously to where I am now. Um, but it definitely helped to have both my parents together. And, you know, both sets of my grandparents lived in New Mexico too. So really I had all of my family there in one area for the most part, which is really nice. How, how close were they to you? Like as far as distance wise, your grandparents? Um, so on my dad's side, for his parents, they lived in the same small town that we did. And okay. then for my mom's side, um, her parents split when she was younger. Um, but obviously, we, we all still got together for holidays and they all got along. Um, but my grandmother is an hour north of us. And then my grandfather was 30 minutes uh, west of us. <laughs> and that had to have been great because 
man, it's like I feel like all my grandparents, like you know, if they weren't passed away, or you know, my grandma lived on the East Coast, you know, here we are on the West Coast, and it's like I never really, I never really had that that feeling of growing up with like your your extra aunts or like, you know your grandparents. You know, I had a couple. I had, I had one of my aunts that I lived next to. Um, or like some distance too, but like it, it wasn't like all the families in one spot. Uh, that would have been nice. I don't know. I seen like so many people that had li like literally their entire family <laughs> within like three square miles. Like it, it was crazy. Yeah, it was definitely really nice growing up just to have everyone there. As I said, not a whole lot to do, but there was always like family time that you could feel that uh, fill that void with. Right. So did you notice, like, I know it's kind of a weird question, but did you notice, like, any difference between, like, your household and, like, some of the households that had, like, divorced parents? Because I, I, I noticed that, like, throughout, man, I was, I don't know if I would say jealous, but I would see some of the kids that had, like, both their parents. And I just, I, I don't know, it just felt like the whole aura was, like, a little different, you know? Not to say that one parent can't give the love to their kid, but I just feel like having two parents, like, I was always, like, jealous of that growing up. Yeah, I mean, I know, I would say most of the, most of the, my peers that I grew up with, their parents probably are divorced or did get divorced while we were going through school. Obviously, I, I think it definitely did have a negative impact on them. Um, you know, they'd be a little shocked, like, oh, you have both your parents. And I think some of what you were talking about, there's a little bit of envy there, because obviously, you know, one big happy family is a lot easier than trying to either take sides as it's one of those situations or just trying to navigate that as a kid when you're already navigating so many other things as you're growing up. No, absolutely. And one thing I did notice is like, you know, the one weekend you might have one parent or some people didn't see their parent, but every so often. And then it's just like, you know, the, the, who, where are they going to go through? It's just like, I've seen it just turn so dirty. So I'm glad that my situation wasn't like as bad as like some of the kids that I saw, you know, the whole like who's going to get custody from during the weekend and this. I didn't really have to go through that that much on my end. So I'm glad on that. But I definitely did notice that. So uh, I'm definitely blessed to have. Uh, it wasn't the most ideal situation. but I'm definitely blessed to have gone through the situation I did. And I had a stepmom for like the majority of the time. That I didn't have my, my, my real mom. So I was lucky with that. Yeah, no, I definitely acknowledge how fortunate I was and still am to have my parents still together. Absolutely. Hey, big shout out to those parents that decided to like stay together and make it work. Because as you can see, like, well, I don't want to say that and assume that this is where your answer is going to be. But as I can see, I've seen people get in the relationships and it's like they last like that, like that long. It's it. it it's like, it's so easy. People find reasons to, to, to break up rather than like, hey, we're gonna stick through it. Like as soon as they get hurt or as soon as it like becomes like a little difficult, I see people like just leaving so fast instead of trying to work through it. Um, and I feel like my parents' generation, like, you know, obviously my, I love you dad, but <laughs> maybe they're not exactly the, the greatest like examples for that, but <laughs> sorry. <Ooh. laughs> yeah, but I feel like that generation, like, my parent generation, I feel like they, like, they fought harder to stay together because I think a lot more people were were together than divorce, and I think the divorce rate's like a lot higher now than it was then. So, I think it does. I mean, my parents were Catholic too, so I think a little bit of like that religious background, obviously, um, that's just an extra thing in their life that helped keep them together. So, what you're saying is Catholics the best religion. I'm kidding. Don't, don't. I'm not. I'm not biased. <laughs> I respect all. I am totally joking. I I told you I was like I am. I will not ask you any questions. That I was, I'm totally joking on that one. Like I would not even try to like do that. And I'll give you a neutral answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you know we we talked about your parents. You know we talked about you growing up like playing with bugs outside. You know what I'm saying kicking the tumbleweeds in the uh, middle of uh, Mariotti. But what about like your sister? So you had two sisters, Ashley and Rebecca. Um, and so you were the middle child. Yes, I was. So how was that? Um, I would say it was probably, you know, it was challenging as times. Obviously all middle child are like, oh, I had it the worst. I was forgotten, right? I got all the hand-me-downs hand -me and right, the short end of the stick. But, um, you know, my older sister definitely 
set a high bar. Uh, she's very well behaved, super studious. Um, even like going through college, she went to a really great private school, got her master's. She's a hydrologist now. So it's like, that's a lot to compete with there, right? Um, but I'm still very fortunate and proud of everything she's done. Um, so just following in her footsteps, obviously that kind of made me want to um, basically meet the same standard that she was. Right. And uh, my little sister, so she's six years younger. So obviously there was a decent gap there. Right. Um, I would say at times it was difficult, obviously, because for a while there was just my older sister and I, and we had to kind of navigate this new baby coming into the family. <laughs> um but no, it was good because I, I really enjoyed being an older sister. So that's why I say it was kind of the, the best to actually be the middle child in my family. She's also killing it, by the way. University of Denver, going on her sophomore year. Yep, I was able to shut up there. Hey, that's because of you, you know what I'm saying? You said you also set the example for her, so. Yeah, I mean, hopefully I did. I hope I had a good impact on her. No, absolutely. Um, So, I, and I feel dumb because I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll just Google it real quick. But like, what? Ex I, now I can kind of figure out the gist of it. But what is a hydrologist? I know uh, I do something so, to do with water. I don't. I, ugh, I can I don't explain know. it on the most basic level because sometimes she goes into tangents explaining it, and I'm like, this is also over my head. Um, but basically, okay, cool. it's a like water either. scientist. Okay. So, um, I guess the best way to kind of explain what she does now. Um, has a lot to do with like chemical levels in the water, evaluating those, because obviously um, that's a big thing right now, especially with the environmental issues. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of research and she does a lot of uh, like research papers that she writes, uh, hoping to contribute to the water community. So that's the best way I can describe it. <laughs> water science. Oh, you are not a <laughs> Oh, you said, here's the talking point. I'm gonna go, Bloop. She's going to watch this and she's going to be like, no. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, I know this is like a little bit off subject. So, I interviewed someone and he said he was a hydroponist or something like that. Or like, um, hydroponics. Yeah, yeah. So, he was talking about that. I don't want to go too much into that detail because I don't want to like change the subject. So, when he said that, I'm like, okay, let me try to put hydroponics. What the hell is that? And then, so I thought it would be kind of like similar when you say a hydrologist, I'm just like, okay, but no, it's just the, like the study of like water and like, the, I'm assuming like, is it, nah, you know, I can't assume. I have no idea, people. I have no idea. I'm trying to take all that information and try to picture it out. So if you guys know, or if you have somebody, family members that are in there, please let me know in the comment section down below as well, because I need to learn. I'm going to have to do some research on that. I'm not even going to lie. I still need to do research on that. <laughs> um, oh, I feel so bad. I'm like, man, I should have. Nah, because I guess I would have never known, like, to ask, hey, uh, do, do, what is your sister? Do anything difficult? No? Okay, cool. <laughs> it's definitely difficult. So difficult that almost no one understands it. <laughs> or can explain it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, that is awesome. So, all right. So, you, you grew up outside, live more of the, the, the outdoor life. Um, were, would you say that you were more like you stuck to your family or do, were you like uh, an extrovert or? No. So I was never extroverted. I've always been introverted. Um, definitely extremely shy growing up, very reserved, never like the one to want the spotlight on me for the most part. Says Which, the girl on the podcast, huh? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just right. Kidding. Well, I'm actually a lot more. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I'm extroverted even now, but I would say I'm definitely a lot more confident. Yeah. As time goes on. No, that, that's good. Yeah, like I don't know. Like when I I grew up because I was so. I, I wouldn't say I was always extroverted, but I kind of was. It, it was like I had to like try to understand. Almost like it was like a whole different like species of person when I was dealing with like introverted people. I'm like. Why is like why are you so quiet? Like why are you just sitting there? Like what? Like, so many questions. So like I would ask people, and like I, I started to learn over time. And then to be honest, as I got like a little bit older, I was like, man, it's kind of nice to be just left alone and just to be like, I would like go sit in my room. Like my dad would have to like when he used to whenever he would ever get mad, he would always send me to my room. Then when he realized I was going to my room on my own and just sitting there, he would like, no come in the living room. 
I'm like, I, it's, whatever it is that I wanted to do, I was never able to do. So I guess I had like a little bit of both where I was forced to be extroverted, but then also I got to a point to where I want to be introverted as well. But I think that allowed me to be able to communicate with people a little bit better because I, I was able to understand, um, you know, more of how people are. So, yeah, I always just kind of like to sit back and observe a situation before. And I would say I'm almost like a selective extrovert. Cause like once I'm comfortable with people, I'm definitely a lot more like outgoing and I'm not as like shy or awkward per se, right. but um, yeah, definitely introverted. I definitely like my alone time for sure. Yeah, that's, it's so crazy. Cause like whenever I go on leave and everyone's like, oh, we're gonna go to this. We're gonna do, I was like, nah, man, I just, uh, traveling is stressful and you get back and it's like you're tired it's like you, you're more tired when you get back than you were before you left I, like, nah, I just want to sit in my room and i might watch a couple of tv shows or i might mess around on the computer watch some youtube but that's my definition of just chilling out you know but, uh, that's just me but all right so you, you grew up in a little bit of a smaller town and so at what point did you get to you know i i think you said uh it was your senior year or sophomore year, I can't remember where you started. Um, we started to think about the the whole military concept that that might even be an option for you. Um, I would say it was more towards senior year. I think up until senior year, I wasn't really quite sure what I wanted to do. Um, both of my parents went to college a lot later in life, so a really big thing for them was encouraging uh, myself and my siblings to go to college. For that experience like they wanted us to have that opportunity right. um so i knew that they wanted me to go to college i wasn't confident in myself to go to college and do well so you know i didn't really want to go i did consider you know enlisting a sophomore junior year but that was one of those things where it's like i don't really know what i want to do and that kind of seems like a route that would be a little easier to take that way i could figure it out um but yeah, senior year, I realized I, I should probably go to college. Like it, it's another opportunity for me to actually get away from home, be a little more independent and do some things that I would not be able to do if I just, you know, stay in New Mexico or right. even if I just enlist. Um, so, yeah, that kind of that decision was also prompted by the fact that I never really felt, uh, you know, Having a supportive family is obviously a blessing. It can be a curse in the sense that sometimes I felt like I wasn't doing things on my own. And like up until that point, I hadn't done anything necessarily like just on my own for myself. Like I couldn't really, I felt like I couldn't claim my own success with what I have done, what I had done to that point. Um, so a big thing for me was like being a Marine Corps officer is definitely gonna put me out of my comfort zone. Cause like I said, I was very introverted um, so I wanted something that was going to challenge me and I knew if there was like pressure to be a leader, like obviously in a good way, cause I wanted that responsibility. Um, but if there was pressure there, then I would definitely rise to the occasion. Um, so yeah, I mean, being a Marine Corps officer, I saw it as an opportunity to go do something for myself and be able to like claim that success as well. So wh why the, well, b before I say why the Marine Corps, like, <clears throat> I just want to go back though. So you said that if you were to go enlisted, that would be the easy route. Uh, yeah, I knew you were going to zone <laughs> in on that. I'm not, 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 not say the enlisted have it easier by any means. Um, easier in the sense that if I made that decision, I wouldn't have to think about college or like a lot of other things that come along with transitioning to college. Like you enlist, right? You sign the contract, you know you're going to boot camp, your path is determined for you virtually. So that is the only sense of easy that I'm <laughs> that. Nah, look, I'm not, I wasn't trying to catch you off guard. It's actually, so before you even said that, I was gonna ask you a question because, so when when I was at a, you know, AMOI duty, we would go do to the uh, the high schools to do the JROTC meets. Like we would do like the uniform inspections. You know, we would grade drill, so on and so forth. And uh, I forgot what the high school was. I was like, man, you know what? Let me switch up my questions. I'm like, you know, chain of command and uniform questions. I was like, man, let me let me ask them like actual real questions that I want to I want to make them think. I want to draw some stuff out of them. So I was like, very first person I asked, I was like. 
So what made you want to become uh, go officer route vice enlisted? <laughs> Hold on. And this kid literally looked at me. He's like, um, at the time, staff uh permission to uh, speak freely. I was like, yeah, what's up? He's like, honestly, my mom told me that not to go enlisted. That way I didn't have to be on my knees scrubbing the floors and getting dirty. I was like. <laughs> That's tough. <laughs> so, I just looked at this kid. I was like. You know, like, but so I was like, all right, cool. I asked the next kid. I wanted to ask people that like weren't right next to him. So he didn't hear that, you know, hear me ask that person. And it was a lot of the same type, type, type answers. Like my mom, you know, my parents uh, said to go officer so I could be in charge. My parents said to, to, to go, to go officer because it was better. And it was just like, I just like me, I didn't know. I didn't like, I didn't really know officer and enlisted before I joined. Like I knew my dad was enlisted, so, but I didn't really, you know, I didn't know too much about it. Um, so I wasn't, but I never got told about, but like, I noticed like certain times, like certain people are getting told like certain things about officer or certain things about enlisted. Uh, and, and I've seen like some of those mentalities kind of carry over and I wanted to make sure that people are getting taught the right thing. Um, and, and not something that, they were probably being told something that they heard before, or they're just assuming that how things are. Um, so, yeah, I don't want to harp too much on that because I told you that I wouldn't go too deep in those type of subjects, but that that kind of perturbed me a little bit to, to hear like multiple people like answering like that. So that's the only reason why, but I was, I was just kind of, you know, I was just messing with you on that question. But anyways, okay. um, <laughs> so, you know, you, you talk, Oh, so what, what made you choose the, uh, the Marine Corps vice, any other branch? Um, so the one thing I didn't mention is that my dad was enlisted as well. He just did his first term, got out as a corporal. And then my uncle was actually an officer. Well, shall I say they're former Marines. So they're both former Marines. Uh, my uncle's on the officer side. My dad was enlisted. So I think growing up, obviously I was very close with my dad. Um, He's just provided so much support and mentorship growing up. And then, you know, my uncle, I saw his side. I think I didn't so much as really fully understand the difference between enlisted and officer when I made that decision. Um, but based off the dynamics and kind of like the research that I was doing just on my own, um, it seemed like that was the route to go because um, as enlisted, like I said, I felt like you had like when you're a junior enlisted, obviously you have leaders above you to kind of mentor you and shape you. As an officer, it's not necessarily the same. Like you do have senior officers to do that. Um, but basically from NROTC to, you know, TBS, you're not on an island yet. And then once you're at a TBS, you're completely on an island as a leader, um, I guess, to make a difference. And I know it's like a stereotypical response, like, oh, why'd you want to join the military? Like right to do something beyond myself to make an impact but i did like i wanted to make an impact and i wanted that to be something um, that i was challenged to do no th there's nothing wrong you can tell when somebody's giving a cheese answer and like it's like mm, okay you just read that off the script type thing but like, obviously like you know i've known you for a little while so like i i kind of understand what your 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 mentality is so like i know i don't think that whatsoever you know I mean, that that's definitely a good reason, too, because, you know, my, my dad wasn't enlisted, but um, and, you know, he was in the Marine as well. And you would figure, OK, my dad was a Marine. That's oh, that's probably why he joined. But actually, I was trying to do the opposite. I was like, my dad was a little rough behind the edges, you know, or rough around the edges. Like he was very stern. I'm like, I just want to be nice. I want to be like cool, calm and relaxed. I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to join the Navy. They, they didn't show up during their appointment that they had for me. I was like. So I set up an appointment with the army. I came over and they were at lunch. I'm like, I was like, all right, you know what? I'm out. So I, literally as I was leaving, I'm sure you've heard stories like this before, but like, this is actually true though. So like, as I'm leaving, I hear someone say, Hey, I was like, like, where are you going? I was like, home. He's like, no, come here for a second. I was like, you know, you know, started talking or whatever. And then 
he said something. He's like, nah, whatever. You probably wouldn't make it anyways. You know, I come to find out that that's a recruiting tactic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But at the time, I was just like, yo, who does this dude think he's talking to? I was like, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? And that was like my whole like bravado type thing. You know, next thing you know, we're going over these like uh, recruiter tags going over. You want to travel? You know what I'm saying? What do you want? You want education? And, you know, and, and here I was a little while late, uh, a little while later. So, yeah, I, I definitely didn't join the Marine Corps because of my dad. But one of the reasons why I did want to do it, though, is because I like to do a lot of things where I think there's a good chance I would fail at or I wouldn't be good at it. I guess I know you said something kind of like alleviated to that uh, a little bit earlier. Like, that's one of the reasons why I went drone shutter because I thought there was a chance I would fail. Like, I didn't think I was going to be good at it. So, I don't know. That's just me. Yeah, I mean, there, so at my high school, we had pretty much every branch of the military come around for like our fairs and such. Honestly, right. the Marines, they were just the most like clean cut, most squared away. Like I'm very organized and very OCD. So I was like, all right, they look like they have their stuff together. And it was kind of interesting because I wouldn't necessarily say that I was approached. Um, Sergeant Steinrock. He's the one that actually helped me through with the paperwork. He's probably, I, he's probably a staff sergeant now, I would guess. But um, yeah, he didn't really approach me. I, I kind of told him like, hey, I'm kind of looking at this. I'm kind of interested. And he's like, all right, here's what you would need to do for it. I'm just like, okay, they're not going to chase me. Okay, I'm going to chase the Marine Corps. <laughs> so it's kind of like the opposite. I was like, all right, well, I mean, this branch, they're telling me exactly what I need to do. They're not trying to like, put the fluff in front, like, oh, here are all the awesome things you can do. They're like, all right, what are you looking to do? You're interested. All right, here's what you need to do for it. And it was just straight into the point, which I actually appreciated. Because if there was a bunch of fluff, I'd probably be intimidated by that and be like, oh, I don't know. But it was straight to the point. So I was like, okay, this is something I can actually do. Yeah, that's, that's crazy that you say that because I think a lot of that fluff does is the reason why people get recruited, but like with me, I, I need, just like you said, I just give me the, give me the facts, all that extra stuff put to the side. Cause at the end of the day, like with me, like I'm not going to be recruited. I mean, obviously that kind of got my attention, but, um, if you just tell me stuff straight up, then you're going to get more out of me by doing it that way. You know what I'm saying? Rather than trying to like, Oh, but you can do this. Well, how about this? Nah, it, either I want to do it or I don't want to do it. And you know, that extra stuff ain't going to help. Yeah, I appreciate it. But like I said, the fluff does definitely help with most people. But for me, that recruiter must have like known how to get to me. That's right. how you know they're a good one. <laughs> They've been spying for a while. They see everybody, how they maneuver around. You no, know, cause like we had ours like come to the, uh, you know, they set, up the, they set up the pull up bar. Yes. Yeah, oh yeah, the, the infamous pull up bar. I could just tell they just know people's behavior and stuff like that. If they see you eyeballing the pull-up bar and you walk by, like, yeah, you probably couldn't do it either. Like, oh, I can't do pull-ups? Watch this real quick. <laughs> yeah, I never got on the pull-up bar then. I knew I no. could, but no. <laughs> you could do pull-ups in high school? I had to do pull-ups in elementary school. What? Yes. <laughs> I could not for the life of me. I would watch these kids doing that. I was just, which is crazy because I was always real skinny and short. I'm like, that was just a weak body. Like, what the hell's wrong with me? You know, like I could do a pull up. I, was say, I think it was all those monkey bars I did, honestly. <laughs> really? Yeah, I, I couldn't do it. I was like watching kids just knock them out overhand, underhand, however you want it. Just doing it like neutral grip like i'm like god damn man like your parents must be strict and be like you get in trouble you just hang from the pull bar or something i don't know i couldn't do it oh. <laughs> so so what made you choose asu uh so it was actually kind of a last minute decision um i originally received my nrotc scholarship to university of new mexico so i had put that as my first school uh, partially because it was within my comfort zone again. Like, right. I was like, wanted to be out of my comfort zone, but I wasn't quite there. So when I got the scholarship and it, I was accepted for it, I started to think about it. I'm like, oh man, I'm only going to be 30 minutes away from home. I'm probably going to be going home a lot. Like, this yeah. actually, this is not what I want to do. Like, I want to challenge myself. I want to be more independent. Um, so I was accepted to ASU as well. So I just kind of inquired into switching my scholarship 
last minute. I want to say it was honestly a month and a half or two months before. Um, my mom took me out to visit Arizona State University. I kind of met the MOI at the time, uh, Major Hess. One of the midshipmen at the time, uh, midshipman Martinez then, um, she kind of showed me around ASU and I honestly kind of just fell in love. I was like, the weather is nice. Like I love the large campus. I love how diverse the campus is. Like the program was only established in 2010. So I feel like I could contribute something to the program still because it's newer. Um, so I just basically transferred my scholarship last minute and it was probably the best decision I could have ever made. You, uh, you missed one thing, a mountain. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're going to talk about a mountain for one second. Because I actually went back uh, two weeks ago for an ASU football game. All right. I was like, all right, I'm going to go on a run. So I, I ran on Tempe Town Lake and I was like, man, I really miss a mountain. So I went back there. It was not pretty. One no. time up that mountain, I was like, I don't understand how we used to do this multiple times or with a pack, to say the least. I'm telling you, man, it's just, <clears throat> I don't know. Like, I'm I'm sure you've seen how the, the you know, and this isn't a knock on anybody. I'm not trying to brag, but I'm sure you see, like, you probably remember the, the PT program, how it was prior to, like, myself and probably Captain Mauer uh, getting there. But I wanted to, like, break down, like, you know, everything about the every aspect of fitness and then, you know, looking at what the long term goals were supposed to be and then how we got from point A to point B. And if you looked at our schedule for how we did PT, it literally encompassed every aspect of fitness and every opportunity possible. So even with the hikes, I was just talking to uh, somebody that was in my first time who, who was uh, in infantry for a while. And a lot of people, what they do is like, all right, we're going to go on this 10 mile death mile. We're going to go on this eight mile death march. We're going to go on like, so instead of just doing like these long hikes, you know, we would break it up, right? We would put our packs down and do exercises and then we go do it again and we do like a lap and then we do core, you know what I'm saying? And break it up. Um, and then we would increase the speed and I was like, all right, cool. We're going to try to go to this, which is a little bit faster than OCS. You know, we're going to put in this much weight while we go to this speed, but then we're going to stop every so often so that we're able to maintain that speed. So I think that's kind of, how you were able to do it and we did it every day because listen i was broke the hell off when i was over there <laughs> yeah i mean i know for a fact i was in better shape then probably than i am now um but you're right i mean the program with you and captain mauer like not to be like oh you all were so great but you really were really great especially when it came to the physical fitness um and honestly that's why later training was probably like the physical aspect was probably the easiest part for me for most of the training no, hey, much appreciated. And like, it's so crazy because the whole time I was like, that I was there, I would always hear people complain about it. Oh my God, a mountain again. Or, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, can't we switch it up? Or like, can't we do dodgeball more often? Or all these things. And it's like, I'm like, hey, I would tell people, like, look, you're going to hate me right now. Like, this will be the time that you hate me. But mark my words, you're going to reach a period of time. To either your fitness is going to drop and you're lucky that you were able to be at that level for a while or you're going to realize like how different it was you know the type of pt that you were doing and you know maybe that was the reason that kind of like you said kind of helped you get through it a lot easier later on down the line because you already had that that foundation was already strong i think that's definitely honestly what it was i can completely contribute that physical fitness aspect to that those training plans we did yeah that's so <laughs> We did, we did three, three days a week, and then eventually, um, every other Thursday, unless you had FEP, then you were off. But of course, you know, we were at FEP. <laughs> but yeah, I, I felt it because I would do, I would do our workout, and then I would work out like right afterwards. I would like go to like the actual gym once I finally got a membership, and then I would get home and I would do like my gymnastic stuff. Like I would, you know, work out there too. So like I was, I was broke the hell off. And it, at one point I was like working at a restaurant and sometimes I wouldn't get off to like midnight, one o'clock. Yeah. I did that for like two months and I was, I, was say, I didn't know about that. <laughs> yeah. It, and it's, I didn't want to, and I'm not saying this to like brag about myself, but like, even if you guys didn't see it, I was, I was dying. Like I remember one day I got off at one. So, I mean, I did, you know, get there at like five, five thirty, do PT workout afterwards do all your work, 
get home, got like a whole 30 minutes to, you know, get coffee, go to work. And I one time I got off at like 1.30. I got home, showered, ate. And then I, I probably got to sleep. I, the last time I remember seeing the clock, it was like, it was like 3.15 or something like that. And then I had to leave my house by, I always left my house by like 4.15, 4.30 latest. I was like, yeah, I don't know how much longer I could do this. An hour sleep after three workouts and 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 going to work. Now I was like in my office like this. Never again. Yeah, yeah. So it was brutal. It was brutal. I guess that's the whole gist of it. Yeah, it's. I'm glad I survived that. And um, now nah, you guys, you guys killed it. I mean, you know, we talked about the the college uh, experience of doing the workouts and whatnot, but. I think it helped for doing like OCS as well. Like, you know, when I went over there, I felt like, you know, because we did all those workouts, uh, I noticed that our midshipmen like seemed to be like going through like a lot of the PT a lot easier. So, um, but before we do go too far with that, like, so how would you like rate your experience being at ASU? Like uh, whether it's just like the school, your, uh, the actual NROTC program, like what was your experience like? Uh, so I would say, I'll start with the NROTC because I feel like that was honestly the biggest part of my college experience. Um, NROTC, probably like a nine out of 10, I would say. Um, I definitely, if you could see me from freshman year to senior year, you would see like a significant difference there. Not only with uh, just like confidence, um, yeah. but just my, like my, my grades, I was doing better with school because of that program, I feel like. Um, I don't know. I was definitely prepared to be a leader coming out of ASU. Like I said, you and Captain Mauer, most of my development honestly did happen there just because you are such strong leaders and you just set amazing examples for us. So program was great. I think uh, the program, the only reason why I didn't give it that 10 out of 10 oh, <laughs> um, no, is because it was still a newer program. So I feel like there's always room that NROTC programs can use to develop. Hmm. So like if there was there like one main type thing or was there like a, a fundamental of it that we were missing that you felt that we were missing? Um, I think honestly more involvement with the Navy side of things. You know, we did a decent amount of integration, but I feel like there could have been a little bit more there, especially because obviously when you get into the fleet, um, if you're on one the Mew or something, you know, obviously you have that connection. So just understanding the Navy and kind of how they function a little bit better uh, would have made the program probably 10 out of 10. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to be honest. So I remember, yeah, I remember that got brought up and, you know, we sat there, all the whole staff, and we said, I was like, man, like, like, what can we do to, to make the, you know, to, to integrate the company a little bit more? And so one of us, or one of them was the, the hike. So, Ever since I got there, I pushed to do a battalion hike. And, you know, old CEO was like, nah, fam, you ain't doing it. Ah, damn. So we were, you know, that support to be able to do it wasn't there. And everybody kept telling me, it was like, man, you're not going to do it. Dude, just try something else. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. not going to happen. And then one time we got the new CEO, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for it. <laughs> I was like, check this out, man. This is what we need to do. All right. This is going to solve the whole integration and it's going to solve camaraderie and bring everybody like this, put us on a scale. She's like, I'm listening. I was like, all right, we need to do a battalion hike. We'll have enough packs. You know, the Navy can do the day packs, you know, and fill it up. And, you know, the, Mar the Marines will do, you know, the, the regular packs. And, you know, and we need to just intermix, interweave us. Don't have Marine, the Navy. It needs to be like everybody just kind of like interweave in there and um that way we start acting as a battalion as opposed to just like two separate f companies she's like okay yeah <laughs> you know no, I, I felt that that's what like i think that was one piece i mean we did some other stuff where we learned about firefighting stuff but i think that was like one piece to me that i just before i left I was so determined that we were going to do that. And and I'm glad. I think we did a few times. I think we did like two or three times. I was glad that we were able to do that. So, I, well, obviously you were gone at the time. But, yeah, we were, we were able to do that. And and uh, I was I was proud of that. That Actually, you were you there when the Navy started doing like the CFTs? No. Listen, I was. 
We were advocating heavy because I was like, look, the OTO didn't want them to do anything in boots. Um, so, but we ended up doing, they ended up doing the Iron Man. They ended up doing the CFT. They ended up, I think they did the endurance course too. And then they did the, uh, the hikes. So I think that helped a lot. So I don't know. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I could see, uh, I, I feel like that would help a lot because I feel like you start to get polarized views where the marine options were like, oh, we're so much more physically fit. And the Navy is like, ah, oh, but we're more studious. <laughs> thing. But I feel like as like midshipmen progress through an NROTC program, like the marine options start to kind of get the same type of mindset. And then the Navy, they sort of have the same mindset. So if we could bring them together, especially as they're like um, the juniors and seniors, I feel like we would be able to pull a lot from our peers that way as well. No, absolutely. And that's, you know, we we end up staying Marine on, with Marine when it came to, were you there for the mentorship program? Yes, yeah, that was started, I want to say my senior year. Okay. Yeah, so I, at first I was like trying to contemplate, I was like, man, should we do it to where you know, the Navy mentors a Marine or Marine mentors a Navy to where it's like, you kind of have to understand both aspects of it. But I think just cause like fundamentally, like when we do like split days and stuff, it was just too many times where we were just away from the other branch. Cause they had other stuff that they had to do and we had other stuff we had to do. It didn't work out that way, but I would have, I would have loved that, you know, cause you would have to do your homework on to make sure you give them the right information. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand the Marine to Marine mentorship there and Navy to Navy. But I feel like right. during the labs, if you had like certain questions that were posed and like working groups with a mix of us, that might have been something that could have, you know, improved all of our leadership there. Okay. Well, now, listen, I mean, these are all things that I could take to my wherever I go, you know, and I, I, I definitely learned. I learned a lot from you. I'm going to be honest. The time that, especially in the beginning, I'm, I'm beyond, I was hella lost because it was like, a, it was a whole new, like, it was something that was so different. You know, it was, it's hard to just common sense your way through like this type of program. Like you had to know specific things. Um, and it wasn't just like basic leadership. It was like, okay, you got to know the programs. You got to know, you know, the type of scholarships. You got to know who's on scholarship. You got to know about this, about all the little intricate things. That's not the normal fleet type stuff. You know, it's a whole different ball game. Trying to do that while still getting you guys ready for OCS, while still having the Navy side, it, it's a lot to expect from anybody. So um, it, it, it was, it's definitely something I can use like outside. And I do appreciate the feedback, but you guys literally like, when Cat Mauer told me, like, no, nah, these guys run the battalion. I was like, what do you mean they run the battalion? I was like, I run, you know, I was like, this is my stuff. What do you mean they run it? Like, no, like, they, they, they do all this stuff. They do the ball. They do the, I was like, hmm. <laughs> I was like, I gotta get used to this, you know? Yeah, it was nice. We got to run things ourselves. <laughs> so you guys actually enjoyed being able to do that? Like, you guys didn't feel any extra pressure? Like, because what did you have? You, you were supplied, right? Um, as far as what I did in NROTC. Yeah, your billets. Yeah, so I had, I did like the steady increase. So I was squad leader, platoon sergeant, platoon commander, um, PTI, and then yeah, PTI. fitness leader. My senior year, that was like my big culminating billet, um, which I'll be honest with you, senior year, I was like, oh man, I got this big billet. Like I'm about to finish school. So I think there was a little bit of that, like, oh man, why am I getting this other big billet? But at the same time, I actually ended up enjoying that. Cause I mean, I enjoyed bleeding PT more than anything in that program. Yeah. Um, but yeah, fitness leader. That was probably my most favorite billet that I had. Yeah. So be honest and, and I don't mind putting this out here. Cause you know, we all learn. <laughs> do you feel like I gave you like room to you know, to, to run the program, or do you think I was too involved? Um, I feel like you actually did give us room to run the program. I think the the biggest thing is that you were open to our recommendations, because I, I think you definitely obviously had an idea of what our uh, physical fitness program needed to look like, and like if our ideas were out there and didn't align with that, you kind of reel, reeled us in there. 
Um, but you'd give us an opportunity to like explain our viewpoints, like, hey, here's why we want to do this PT. And if it was well thought out, like you let us make that decision. So I feel like in that sense, um, especially as the AMY, like you have to keep us on track. Like you have to have some sort of control. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, we would be doing Frisbee PT most of the time. Oh so <laughs> maybe that wouldn't be my first choice because I'm not very coordinated, but you get the gist of it. No, that, that's good too. Cause yeah, it's like, uh, like I said, at the same time, I was learning a lot of that stuff, but like, I didn't want to come across like I was just learning it, but I would like, I would hear like certain terms that you guys would say, or I would see like where you guys would go, like set up this or if I, you know, and like I said, I learned a lot from you guys and not only that, but you guys the ability to, to do like, to run events, like do the ball, do the, the, um, the dining ins and stuff like that is impressive. There's Marines that like, Hey, go run the ball. They're like, what, but, what, duh, 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 duh. and you guys are like, all right, cool. Yeah. Hey, I need you guys. Duh, duh, duh. I just need you to go do this. You guys are just like, like autopilot. That's impressive. That's I get, I gained so much respect for like that program and to see even like with like the students to, to see, um, the, 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 the ability of you guys at like such a young age is like incredible. So seeing all that and putting that together with the officer pipeline and like seeing all that, I was, I was vastly impressed, you know, I was vastly impressed. I was going to say when, I think when you already set the bar at a certain level for all of us going into the program, like the bar was already set there. Right. We already knew like that we needed to come up with products and that they need to be good and that we need to figure out what we were doing quickly. So I think that's honestly the main reason why like the majority of us were just able to be like, all right, I need to figure this out. Got to figure it out fast. Don't want to fail because all my peers around me are at my level, if not excelling above me. And right, like you want to keep up with your peers, especially in that officer program. No, absolutely. And it's funny because it was, it was the, my very first summer, right? So I got there in like March or April and that very first summer we were at OCS together, obviously student and instructor 2017 summer of 2017. And, um, like, I, like I knew some of you guys names, but like, I mean, like you guys were new. I was, I was only there for like a little bit, you know, like prior to actually, uh, I was still checking in, getting my, trying to get my, my house settled and all that stuff. So I wasn't like there all the time. Um, but you know, I did see you guys at OCS. So, um, I remember hearing some of the names and stuff like that. I, I know I ran into you like a few times, uh, you know, you know, I had OCS, I ran into, uh, Orton a few times, ran into who else was there? Uh, Holtz. Yep. Holtz. <laughs> I, you know, I read it a whole, it's like, uh, he's, he's up uh, you at the same unit as him or something. No, no, not the same unit. Okay. He did tell me he ran into it. He's like, you'll never guess who's here. And I was like, I probably won't. <laughs> he was, he was a couple of units down. He was actually in the same unit as, uh, this guy I went to the drill field with, uh, he's a warrant officer now. And he was in my unit in Japan, uh, chief warrant officer site. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, I walked in there. He's like, Hey. He's like, guess who's here? I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, you remember this guy? I was like, get the hell out of here. I was like, what? <laughs> I ran into him in Pensacola as, as well when he was going through. Uh... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I remember all of my run-ins with you at OCS. The only reason I remember is because I was, I was really mad because I didn't know extra small, like green shirts existed. So I wore smalls and I like, I have a very small neck, right? So it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't like it's down here when it should be right here. Right. And you would just rip on me for it. And I was like, I don't know what he wants me to do. Like, I, I can't change the size of the shirt. Like this is the smallest size. Like I said, before I knew extra small existed. I remember the second time I just like, I wasn't eating. Cause like we eat all the time in OCS. And for me, I was full all the time and you were like, no, take your tray over there and eat. And I was like, oh. Yeah, but see. It was memorable though, because I was like, why? Why is he doing this? 
What, isn't that a good thing though? No, it was a good thing. But obviously in the OCS mindset, I'm just like, oh. <laughs> you were probably like, I, just want to get over with. I graduate in 19 weeks. You know what I'm saying? I'm almost done. I just, I don't want to eat. I can, I can wait. I can eat afterwards, but I'm telling you, man, that, that nutrition, it's, it's killer. Like, it, you know, you may feel full or, you know, you just want to hurt and get things done, but you have to eat there. I had to force my candidates, some of my candidates to eat just same thing as a drone. So I had to force some of my recruits to eat because they wouldn't eat. And like, you got like, you know, how hot it is out there. I was, I was, I've never drank so much water in my life. Like I was a drinking canteen after canteen after canteen as, as the freaking um, sergeant instructor. Yeah. I was about to say, I, I don't like water. I'm one of those weird people that like, does not like drinking water. I got to force myself, but oh. out there, honestly, I did like, I downed a lot of water. It was surprising. I just wasn't used to the humidity though. Cause I, I had only been in dry heat up until then. Right. My whole thing was just having to wear rolled sleeves. I'm like, why are we doing this? It's so hot that you, you I can't even get my arm in the sleeve and it like starts rolling all weird. And I don't like that. <laughs> so, so overall experience for ASU, you would say nine out of 10. And I'm assuming that when you were, uh, when you left, was it like kind of a relief that you're done? Uh, so I, I would say it was a relief I was done with NROTC because I was ready to just like move on with that path. Right. Um, I wasn't ready to leave college. Mm. Like I really enjoyed my college experience, so I wasn't ready for that. But at the same time, I knew I had a lot to look forward to as far as like Marine, uh, my Marine Corps officer path. Okay. And I know this is, I kind of went a little long, but like, can you do like, just like, kind of brief description of like how you felt about um, the the majority of OCS, TBS, and just like where you're at now. I know it's kind of fast and it doesn't have to be like a certain time frame, but um, I just want people to kind of like see the, the, not only the officer time frame, but just like kind of like your life timeline kind of going up to where you're at now. Okay, yeah, so I, I only had the six weeks at OCS um, with the seniors that did the platoon leadership course. Um, so OCS was really quick for me. Basically, once I was at week five, I was pretty much done. I would say the most challenging part of OCS for me was probably just leading my peers. Obviously, I had done some of that with NROTC, but it, it wasn't as uh, as stressful and it wasn't really graded counting towards something. So for right. me, I really struggled with that because um, like I said earlier, I like to kind of sit back, observe and come up with a really solid plan. But obviously at OCS, that's not the point. Like it's, can you make decisions under stress, whether they're like the best one or not? So right. for me, I struggled because I'm like, I want to make the perfect plan. Right. So for me, that was difficult, but um, OCS altogether, I would say was actually not that challenging overall. The reason I say that is because I had trained super hard after um after college for those couple of weeks leading up to ocs so i would say physically that's one of the largest barriers that i would have felt as a candidate um, but because my running was really great i was probably the strongest i had been in a very long time like that element i feel like was removed not to say it wasn't challenging because obviously when you're putting out it's going to be challenging no matter what yeah, um, but for me Physical fitness was, wasn't really a struggle for me. Yeah. You're a beast. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. You're, you're definitely a beast. Yeah. I mean, I always had improvement. Like I wasn't the strongest or the fastest, but once you remove that element at OCS, it's like, can you just last those couple of weeks? So no, that's, that's, that's actual facts. And like I said, like there were some times during OCS, I felt bad for y'all. I was like, Mm, I'm glad I get to go away right now because they're about to get this work, especially after the hike. You guys went into the Suli. Mm -hmm. But hey, I felt for y'all on that one too. I was like, damn, they're still not back. It's like seven o'clock already. You know, but yeah, I mean, so even even now, I probably remember it a little more fondly than it actually was. So if you had asked me right after OCS, it might be a little bit different. But like in hindsight now, I'm like, okay, it, it wasn't too challenging for me. And once I was done, I think for me also, all of NROTC, like that's all I had been prepping for. 
So I feel right. like I built OCS up to be a lot more than it actually was. And then when I was done, I was like, I just stressed myself out for three whole years, like significantly more than I needed to. So. Hey, some people don't got it like that though. Like some people still did probably did this. I mean, they probably felt they trained as hard as you did and they got there and they had a hard time with it. Yeah, just the, I mean, just the stressful environment. I grew up in a strict household, like right. yelling, all of that. That wasn't, that wasn't, uh, I don't want to say anything new. I wasn't getting yelled at all the time, but <laughs> I was definitely more <laughs> acclimated to that sort of environment. Right. And it, it's funny because when you mentioned earlier that uh, you remember like some of the run-ins that you had with me like, at OCS, obviously like I would say you and you and Orton stuck out and I knew Orton because um, we had to deal with some stuff with like supply or whatever. And I just kept hearing that name. Captain Mauer just kept repeating that name. So I'm like, when I heard that name and I put a face to it, I was like, oh, cause, and he was in my platoon. Um, but then I, so really it was just you, you and Orton were the two that, that I remember for that short time. Uh, and then obviously Applegate was there and then, mm -hmm. um, and then Holtz, but like, I didn't really know them that much. So like every time I, like, every time I saw Orton, like I made it a point to like, <laughs> to just correct the hell out of him. Like, you should, you should ask him about our, uh, Senior fart like run. Enough said. Oh, like, yeah. about it. oh, absolutely. And then like I remember every time I ran into you, it was like always at the chow. Hall. I don't know why that, but it was always at the chow hall. And I was like, you know what? Absolutely not. I was like, I'm gonna find some type of correction. Paige. <laughs> <laughs> it was like I was like, this man really is coming like from two platoons away just to come find me. It's like not today. Oh my God. Like, I'm not gonna lie. So like, there was a point where like, I wanted to laugh so bad because I was like, I know she can't stand me right now, but I'm like, you know, I wanted to, I'm not gonna say I wanted to make anything harder on you guys. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't go overboard and like, oh, shift this way. But you know, to, to add to the stress a little bit when it's like, I know, he, I know he's around somewhere. I know at any second I'm going to hear my name get called and it's like, let me eat you know so I, I did the same thing with Orton like yeah he he got that work you should ask him I'm gonna ask him <laughs> <laughs> so all right so you know we, we passed OCS uh it was the easiest thing you've ever done in your life um and then now <laughs> I'm just kidding I'm kidding People I did not that. say that's that. not what she said people. That's not <laughs> so now you um yeah, you're going on to TBS and uh, to a lot of people, there's like a pretty big buildup with, uh, with TBS. What, like, what was your, uh, what was your initial thought of it? And then like, what was your experience like when you went through? Um, so TBS, I actually didn't have a whole lot of knowledge, like how that training was going to be structured exactly like what I would be doing. I guess the focus was always on OCS through NROTC. And, you know, when I went to Captain Mauer, and talked to him about it and I was like, hey, can you tell me a little more about TBS? Like, I'm a little nervous, you know, cause it's getting closer. Basically all he said was like, uh, just continue your hiking. Don't worry about it. Like when you get there, you're like, you're gonna be pushed through the pipeline. Like you'll figure it out when you get there. And for me, I like to know what I'm getting myself into ahead of time. So for me, I was like, oh man, <laughs> sleepless nights, but it helped that I was with Echo Company um, cause basically I commissioned in May and then I think it was uh 4th of July weekend. I want to say is when I went to TBS. So there wasn't a whole lot of time between when I commissioned and went to TBS, which mm -hmm. I'm very thankful for, um, that, and I don't like the extreme cold in Quantico that much. So I mostly was there during the summer. Yeah, um, that cold, that's not it. I'm good. No, it's not. <laughs> like when we got into November and we were still doing like our last events, I was like, I don't know how the next company's gonna do it. Cause like they're they're literally there like November, December, January, February. It's brutal. Um, yeah, when I got to TBS, um, still pretty nervous because I didn't know what to expect. Um, TBS I have like a love-hate relationship with. Overall, I wouldn't want to go back um, as an actual lieutenant or as an SPC. Hopefully my monitor is listening. <laughs> Yo. Oh, you don't want to go back? 
Hey, no, no, well, I'm not. I'm not really looking to go back. Um, it doesn't quite fit what I want to do next. But um, TBS, I felt like it was probably like a month longer than it needed to be. Obviously, it's uh, focused on like creating rifle platoon commanders, very combat arms oriented, uh, like the most basic infantry skill levels, which I understand uh, because the lessons that you learn from doing those things, you can definitely take away as an officer, no matter what MOS you have. But for me, um, towards the end, I didn't really have any interest in doing a combat arms MOS. I felt like I would be able to contribute to the Marine Corps more in one of the support MOSs. Um, so for me, I just felt like it kind of dragged out towards the end and I was like, okay, here we go. Like, uh, the, I didn't so much as mind the field. I actually enjoyed that more than the classroom time. Yeah, but I think it was like, more of the waiting and it, it, you know, it felt like they could like narrow down at least one of the fexes. Like I feel like we could have gotten the same end result, maybe like on the fifth month, fifth month, as opposed to like the sixth. Right. Did it um, rain when you were in the field? Did it rain? You said when, it was, when you were in the field, did it rain? It rained a lot of times we were in the field. <laughs> That's it rained. Like it poured in Quantico and it was hot and humid. Um, but like I said, I enjoyed being in the field again, because that's kind of the time when you, you're with your own thoughts, like you get to be outdoors. So I, I enjoyed that aspect a lot. Um, not knowing which MOS I was going to get was just another uncertain thing, you know, depending on where you fall, which you do have control over where you fall. But at the same time, um, like if I'm just being candid, I was literally the middle of the middle third. Right. So, you know, I wasn't going to get my first through third choice because they were low density MOSs. Um, mm. The physical aspect of TBS, different than OCS for sure. Um, I was definitely challenged, especially when it came to the E course. Um, hiking, I actually, Captain Mauer was correct. The hiking was not as challenging as I thought it was going to be. Um, I was well prepared for that because the NROTC program as well. Um, land navigation, I was never good at that. <laughs> I don't know if you remember how terrible I was. Like, I, I would go this one and I'd end up sure. over there. I'm the stereotype of the lost lieutenant when it comes to land navigation. Um, so nothing changed there at TBS. I just sucked it up and figured out a way to, like, be good enough to pass, basically. Um, so for me, definitely mentally challenging when it came to the land navigation as well. Um, so you felt that was like the, the hardest, the most challenging part for you there? I feel, yes, definitely. Cause I was going to say, as far as like leading my peers by the end of TBS, um, cause I had a key billet towards the end. I was actually very comfortable with leading my peers. Um, so I would say by the end of TBS, my confidence had definitely skyrocketed since the beginning and leading my peers was no longer the most challenging thing for me. Nice. Yeah, I because even at OCS, man, I seen some people crumble and get destroyed on those peer evals. Like, and if you were that type that even if you were it, it's so weird because like even if you're that one that like you wanted to help so bad, but you were like, Hey, hey guys, all right, cool. If you weren't in the billet, but you were like trying to be that guy to do it, they would tear you up on those peer evals. They they didn't like it. Like a lot of people would have had this ego like well, he's not in the billet, so they shouldn't be doing it. Like, so I think a lot of the, it was a couple prior enlisted that would be the one gathering everybody up. Like, hey, check us out. Hey, this is the best way to do it. Uh, but they didn't like, they didn't like that. So they were kind of encouraged to allow people to, to do their billet and not help out too much. Yeah. I also, the TBS class that I went through with was mostly uh, Naval Academy graduates as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, because they tend to put a lot of them in there. So, I mean, they're definitely well prepared for TBS. So I think they, just having so many Naval graduate um, applicants as well in TBS pushed me to be even better. Cause obviously you're still kind of competing with your peers to a certain extent, like you are at OCS. So that just pushed me to uh, be a better leader as well because they're top tier. Yeah, no, absolutely. So. I mean, it's definitely good to get this uh, a captured picture of OCS and TBS, like, you know, uh, you know, coming from like young, young officers. To, it, 
like it, it kind of helps to know like me going through that summer training it kind of helped me to know like what you guys go through because most enlisted don't fully understand like what it takes to become an officer do like the, the basic training uh that it takes before you guys actually hit the fleet uh you know you just see him and all of a sudden there's a lieutenant there you know to be able to see that whole pipeline how it goes through like the the whole um like whether you make it whether you don't make it th th just to see everything i've seen some people get dropped some people don't um it's i think it definitely helps to paint a picture because i told a lot of my enlisted guys about that as well and they you know they can get a better picture uh, and it actually like i have a lot more respect for officers after i did getting the quigley and <laughs> yes the, the i don't know and uh, after doing like the a lot of the training with you guys so um i, I can definitely appreciate it a lot more yeah, I think like that TBS, those six months, I think when lieutenants get to the fleet, they're like, all right, they just came from college. Right. Well, like, what did you do? Like, what do you know? And we still don't know anything when we first get to the fleet, like, if we're being honest, because we're just handed this MOS that we know nothing about for the most part. Um, but yeah, TBS, I feel like there's just not a whole lot of knowledge there as far as what goes into it and how long we're there. Okay, and you said you're, I mean, you don't have to like disclose like your state, but like, what would you say your uh, MOS was again? A 102, it's manpower officer. Okay, and like what, like how, how do you like being in the fleet? Like what's, what's, what's the experience like being like a young lieutenant in the fleet? Um, so I, I'm the adjutant and legal officer at 8th Communication Battalion. Um, so that's a larger battalion, about 1,100 to 1,200 Marines altogether. Um, so when I first came in to the battalion, there was definitely a lot of pressure to do well. Um, I was replacing a captain at the time. He had prior enlisted experience as well. Very good adjutant. Um, my on-the-job training time with him was super good. Um, I virtually had four months of on-the-job training time. So graduated TBS in December and then January of 2019, I showed up to the fleet. And then from January to April, I had that on the job training time. Um, so he did a really good job of helping me kind of get acclimated to the fleet, just kind of used to the dynamics. Um, as no 102, typically you're the OIC of a shop. So at the time I had about nine Marines, I still have about nine. So, you know, you go through TBS and you're like, oh, I'm gonna be a rifle platoon commander. Right. And then I get 102 and it's like, okay, I'm actually leading a shop. And the dynamics are a little bit differently too, because primarily like you work directly for the commanding officer and you have an admin chief that let's be honest, actually runs the shop. It's not, it's not the adjutant. Hey, hold um, on. Let's not run over that real quick. <laughs> Big shout out to all the admin chiefs. Cause I'm going to tell you right now, sometimes that, that, that admin chief gets overlooked and it's, it's very underrated, man. They do so much for the, the, like the, the squadron. So I appreciate all my admin chiefs out there. Big shout out to you guys. Yeah, so it's just a very different dynamic than you're used to being taught. Um, so I had to definitely get acclimated to that. For me, I actually realized that I enjoyed having a smaller section um, because I got to know my Marines a lot better. There's just a lot more freedom to do things with a smaller group of Marines as well, as far as like training or PT. Um, so I enjoyed that aspect. Um, I think getting to the fleet was actually a lot better than I expected. I think I was so nervous about just getting there and learning as much as I could right away so I wouldn't be that second lieutenant that didn't know anything. Um, but I actually ended up picking my job up pretty well. You know, I still enjoy doing what I'm doing, which is why I accepted career designation. Um, right. It's still challenging though because I feel like the one thing they don't really tell you is that you're also kind of a counselor. As like an officer, because you know, your Marines, they're just like any young adult. Like when we were going through college and you were dealing with us, we had plenty of personal issues as well. You know, whether it's finances or family, you know, whatever it is, work life. Um, so you deal with that a lot, which I really enjoyed that aspect and that's that's part of why I feel like I, I can make an impact on the Marines because I try to be as involved as I can. So I really enjoy, like genuinely enjoy getting to lead Marines. And even though I'm 25, like I enjoy being able to impart my own knowledge and life experiences on them. That way they can develop as leaders as well.
because the way I view my shop is like we're all a team. Obviously, I'm ultimately the leader supervising that team, but I'd rather develop each and every one of them to be a leader and like participate and contribute to the team effort by me just, you know, telling everyone what to do. So I've really enjoyed my time in the fleet. Um, I've been at Ethcom about three years, so I've been able to settle in. You know, I know everyone that's there now. I love the people I get to work with. Um, my job again, love hate relationship, right? <laughs> but for the most part, I do enjoy what I do. Nice. Yeah, that's like, sometimes you don't always get, you know, whether it's the unit that you're at, you know, that you always have like some type of friction with or the MOS that you get, you didn't, re it sounded all glamorous and you're just like, I don't know if I like this one. Uh, you know, and officer enlisted, some people just lap move because they just don't really, uh, they don't truly get what they want out of the military through their MOS so that, you know, they change it up. But I'm glad that you were able to find, you know, an MOS that uh, gave you that satisfaction and, and made you want to keep going as a Marine. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think when it came to MOSs, it probably helped that I was relatively open to any MOS I would receive. Earlier I said I, I didn't really have an interest in the combat arms MOS, um, but you know, if that's what the Marine Corps had given me, I was still open to try to make the most of it. I wasn't set on a specific MOS, which I think ultimately helped me and open many doors when it came to my experiences when I first got to the fleet. No, that that's definitely good. You know, the the Marine Corps definitely loves people that are flexible, whether it's duty station, MOS, or just like any type of task that they got to do. You know, um, it, it seems like they kind of like push the uh, the ones that are flexible and willing to do a little bit more outside their comfort zone, a little bit higher than those that are just they want to just be comfortable the entire time, whether it's staying at their duty station or, you know, not wanting to do things outside of their normal job title, you know? Yeah, I mean, the pace is a lot with how big the battalion is. Right. Um, it hasn't slowed down since I've gotten there. But like, this is probably for the better because it's challenged me a lot in a lot of different ways. No, absolutely. Um, so, like, first of all, like, being able to see that entire timeline and just kind of, like, see, like, knowing what I that period of time, the, the, the couple of years that, that I knew you when we we're, you know, at ASU and then just like seeing the before and after. One of the reasons why I love doing these interviews is like, you know, uh, I, I get to see that full picture of somebody, you know, it's like, you're kind of get, getting to, to know someone's entire life. Meanwhile, you only knew like a spectrum of them. You know, the experience that, that I had with you was only like this small, but being able to go back to these interviews and like, just to see a little bit more about you, you know what I'm saying? Like, Imagine if, you know, you stay in long enough to where, I know you're saying that you might not now, but, you know, staying in long enough to where, like, you know, general page. Like, imagine going back to, to seeing, like, an old video, an old interview, you know, of 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 a general and, like, kind of, like, seeing their entire life kind of, like, brought out. I think that's absolutely awesome. And, you know, the, the interview that I did with, um, he's probably a captain now, but Lieutenant Job. It's going to be the same way because, you know, I know he's going to stay in for like a little while, even if it's just to like Lieutenant Colonel, Colonel, but being able to go back and like reference like a video to where you talked about your life. I think that's, I think that's amazing. I'll hold on to this one for yeah. when I'm first Civ Div. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if you keep that same energy in a couple of years when they're like this with Major. We'll see. You might need to do a follow up interview. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to be like this. <laughs> Probably grouchy <laughs> HR. <laughs> oh my God, it's so amazing. All right, well, I, I don't want to hold you up all night, but before we do go, um, what would you like to, like, if you could say anything to anyone that's pursuing, the, you know, the, um, the, the ROTC route that wants to go officer, like, what is something that you would tell them? Um, and then what kind of advice would you give uh, to like a, a new lieutenant? So I'd say the biggest thing if you're considering going the officer route is first of all, just throw the self-doubt away for whatever reasons you have that you don't think you can do it because it's a long road ahead of you. You're going to experience challenges like that's inevitable. So just throw the self-doubt away because I found that to be a major thing that blocked me um, throughout my career path so far. Um, Let's see here. <laughs> <You're> nervous? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, hell no, nah, don't be. Um, 
And then I guess the other part to that kind of, as far as advice is that there are all kinds of people that go through the officer path. So it might seem like we're all the same, like straight edge, determined, like we all have it together, but we all come from different backgrounds. Like not all of us are extroverted, as you can see, like different personalities. The Marine Corps needs different people. So just because maybe you don't view yourself as the stereotypical leader, it doesn't mean that you don't fit the bill or can't fit the bill as a Marine Corps officer. Right. Um, okay. As far as advice, I kind of hit on it already. And I feel like this is a piece of advice I'm going to give out forever. But um, I know a lot of my peers were very set on an MOS, like going into TBS or even into the NROTC program. So if you don't necessarily have a contract for that MOS, I would honestly keep all doors open. I feel like the process that TBS uses to determine which MOS you're going to receive ends up working out in the end. So you don't want to cut yourself off from future leadership opportunities. Um, 0102 wasn't necessarily my first choice, but it's probably, I feel like I fit that MOS better than any other MOS in the Marine Corps. And the opportunities that I've already gotten, um, I feel like they're just gonna continue to allow me to progress as a leader in the future as well. And look at for someone that said that they're they're introverted and they might be a little bit nervous. You you sure they get that point across pretty smooth. Yeah, I mean, I feel like my view right now, because I'm only a first lieutenant, is like still very narrow. Right. Like a senior leader probably wouldn't give that same advice. But I'm thinking like for the midshipmen and those people looking to be a Marine Corps officer. No, absolutely. So when we do our follow up, when you're like, uh, when, you, when you pick up captain or close major or something like that, and it's a whole lot different. Like, look, man, you're good. Don't worry about that. Well, yeah. major with like gray hairs and wrinkles in a wheelchair. Yo, I don't think majors are like that. <laughs> no, I was just kidding. No, it's you know, like like you know, like you said earlier, you know, certain certain jobs, certain things kind of put like a little extra stress on you, but. That's part of the adaptability portion of the Marine Corps. They like to they like to test you. They, I, you know, I think they do it on purpose, but they definitely like to test you to see you know what you can handle and what you can't handle, and then kind of work uh, work on building your uh, your strengths and weaknesses up from there. So, but I so much appreciate you. Thank you. I know like you had stuff going on. You know, you got life. You're on the East Coast time right now. You know what I'm saying? So you know the stars are out there. Like. And, you know, and uh, the birds ain't out chirping no more. That's for damn sure. But yeah, I totally I appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely appreciate the opportunity. Um, never thought I'd be on a podcast, yet here I am. So maybe this is my next big break. Hey, you know what I'm saying? You might get discovered over here. Next thing you know, you're oh, a movie <laughs> now. <laughs> no, I, like I said, I truly appreciate you. And, uh, and I'm not just saying this because you're a guest and I tell people like the real, but um, you were definitely... You know, someone that stood out to me at the the ROTC, and uh, you know, I I felt like not just the ability portion of it, like you always had heart, and I could tell you were always determined to be better. And even when we we're at OCS, I get like I, my intent was to purposely fluster you because I felt like I knew like certain weaknesses that I could kind of poke at, and I knew that you were gonna push through them. But and uh, you know, obviously with the intent to make you better, I'm sure at some point you're like, man, I can't stand this dude, but. Everything was just to make you guys better, man. And I could tell that, I mean, you turned out to be a, a great a great Marine, a great officer so far. So um, I'm always available if you need anything, um, any advice or anything like that. Um, yeah, c please continue to do great things throughout the fleet. You have a lot to offer the, uh, the Marine Corps, your unit, uh, and those that are around you as well. So I appreciate you. And um, yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Do you do like the whole social media or anything? Do you want people to try to reach you at something or you're just like, leave me alone? <laughs> I'm I mean, the 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 followers. Huh? I have a private account though. What? Why would I? You, said you have what? A private account. Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha. So like you do like Instagram or something? I have Instagram. Okay. So, but I'm assuming you probably just like screen people out. Yeah. Okay. Man underscore three. Okay, there you go. And I'll, what I'll do is I'll have my editor kind of like put it like somewhere on the screen or in the description of the video as well when it comes out. All right, sounds good. Yeah, no bots. All right, if you're a bot, stay away. All right, we don't like the bots. 
No bots. <laughs> Hey, I appreciate you. Like I said, uh, feel free to reach out if you ever need anything from me or if there's anything else I can do. All right. Thank you. Hey, appreciate you.